so we are absolutely starving i don't know if you can see the ankle still a little swollen we sprained our ankle in the rain coming from our shift a couple days ago we're getting better we can hobble around now but we still can't fully walk which sucks because we have a disco party on sunday for halloween and that's an email from work but we are currently about to submit our application we're submitting the gre scores and then we're turning in the application completely it's due on the first today is the 29th so it's damn near here and i'm 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 so excited i'm so proud of us um we're finally submitting our phd applications we did it we submitted we decided to we talked to jason who goes to columbia we also talked to elizabeth earlier about our gre scores and elizabeth said but they're so good like you should submit them and then when i asked jason today i was like i talked to elizabeth i just want a second opinion what do you think about them he literally only responded submit them <laughs> <laughs> like so apparently they're really great so we have submitted the scores and we have officially submitted our first phd application don't mind my don't mind my um don't mind them um but it ain't my cyber and some of them um they they be out of control all the time but we have officially submitted our first phd application so i'm through the roof i'm very excited we are i know we're accepted already but i'm just i'm so excited that we finally submitted it this is just your reminder that God literally always has your back. My recommender, I needed three recommendations for this application. The application is due today. It's November 1st. It is 11.09 p.m. I have been in touch with this, this recommender for well over a month now. They literally asked to be involved with this process of writing my letters of recommendation. I was hesitant at first. I should have just went along with that, but me trying to be like, okay, yeah, You've known me for a long time. You can speak to my character. You want to write it, which means it's going to be a really enthusiastic letter. We'll give them a you know an opportunity. Sent them the stuff. Sent them all of the stuff. Followed up with them multiple times over the month, multiple times, including today, and literally including this morning. Hey, just want to make sure that you go and submit today. Got everything that you need. Is there anything that you need on my end? It is eleven ten. They still have not submitted. I text them like i said this morning um and time has gone on they said they were going to do it this afternoon this afternoon passed all of this stuff i had book club and in book club book club was at like 7 30 i'm thinking they still have not submitted this shit yet so i followed them up with, up with them right after book club i'm thinking okay maybe it was just you had a busy day or something you about to do it now that you're home with your glass of wine sitting at your computer great I follow up with them, sent them a message. Hey, just following up. Want to make sure that everything's good. No response. It is 11, 11 p.m. No response the day of that this application is due. The applications are due at 11, 59. And I have to have every piece of the application in. I have been so strategic about crafting my, my applications for well over a year now. Writing and rewriting and rewriting and rewriting and sending it to people and having them review it and building the CV and refining the CV, everything. Who would be able to speak to my my experience? Which people would be um, weighted the heaviest when they're reviewing the stuff? Literally all of that. And... I cannot believe that at 11, 11 p.m. November 1st, 2021, the night of this PhD application, that they would ghost me. So I reached out at, it was 10.02, I reached out to someone that I had interned with before in Baltimore that can speak to my experience as a clinician because I was an intern with them. And she actually wrote a letter of recommendation for me before, I think when I was applying to my master's program. And I reached out to her and I emailed her and I said, I don't even think you're gonna see this one time. I didn't have her phone number. The only number I have is her office phone number, which obviously she's not in the office at 10 something at night. So I had no choice but to email her. I emailed her, actually I'm just gonna read you the email so that you know exactly what, what you said. You said, hey, so-and-so, I don't even know if you would see this in time because it's late and I wouldn't be checking my emails at this time, but my PhD application is due tonight and my recommender is ghosting me at the last minute. They asked to write my letter more than a month ago. I've sent them multiple reminders and have been in communication with them the entire time, including checking in with them again this morning. However, the deadline is practically here and they are now not responding, nor have they submitted anything on my behalf. I don't know what to do. I'm completely stressed out about the situation. I'm so sorry to even ask you. 
um, so last minute. But if you could try and draft a recommendation letter on my behalf, I would greatly appreciate it. Hopefully they respond soon and it all works out. But at this point, I think I have to find a last minute alternative. And then I sent them the details about who I was applying to, hyperlink that person's profile, um, sent them my statement of purpose and my CV. And they responded, I sent them that at 10.02 p.m. I sent them this at 10.02 p.m. at 10.23. 10.23, so only like 20 minutes later. They said, evening, I normally don't check, but just happened to send an email and decided to see what was going on. Let me look and see what I can do. The thing about God, nature, universe, creator, source, great spirit, the ancestors, they never let me down. They are never going to let me fall, especially when it is stuff that is outside of my control. They know how intentional I've been about curating this entire process. And they were not about to let somebody's flakiness, foolishness, or any of that kind of stuff stand in my way. They made sure that at 10 something at night, the person that I needed, the only person that I could contact to write a letter of recommendation for me was awake and willing and checking the emails to see what I sent them. That is absolutely incredible. And because they wrote a letter of recommendation for me for my master's program, which was situated in the clinical science department at Columbia, um, and has everything to do with what I'm looking to do in my doctorate, they already have a great base to write my letter from. Um, and so they're just adding on to it, you know, tailoring it so that it's specific to the doctoral program. But how incredible that just an hour and a half before this thing is due, that they come through, that they have everything that they need to have in order to make sure that I'm taken care of. Like, regardless of what people throw at me regardless of how people try to sabotage me regardless of how people don't show up for me god always makes sure that i am taken care of like this motherfucker don't miss no he's fucking good that motherfucker don't miss man he's good in the heat of battle he don't miss ashe so just more of documenting our process today is november the 11th 2021 and I have been working today. I literally started and completed, submitted, paid for all of that two different PhD applications today. Um, like I said, we completed it, sent the stuff to the recommenders, um, followed up with them, sent a follow-up email with like a little Excel sheet of all the deadlines and all that kind of stuff and paid for them. They're paid for, they're officially submitted. So now it's just like waiting for the GRE scores to process, waiting for the transcripts to process and waiting for the recommenders to submit their stuff. But that's all stuff that I can't do. That just comes with time. Um, I am very excited about the fact that I submitted these because now my list is up to five schools, which is amazing because historically I only applied to one school. I applied to Vanderbilt, that was it. I applied to Teachers College um, for Psychology, that was my only psych program. Yeah, but because the doctorate is so different with it being five years of commitment and you know, just a lot of different things. This is where you're going to be living for the next five years. It's a it's a lot different. I want to make sure that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. So I just kind of applied to all of the schools that resonated with me and where the professors were actually accepting students. And so right now we're at the, these five. I think this is going to be my list. And then I'm done with it um, because December 1st is right around the corner. That's when a lot of the deadlines are anyways. And these are the ones that kept popping up in my research anyway that I've been doing now for at least a year. There were a few other ones that I really liked, but um, the professors that I'm interested in aren't accepting students. So that knocks them out of the running. Um, but these five are a really strong five. They're all really great schools. University of Kentucky is like my least favorite option and that speaks volumes because it's still my faculty mentor would be a black woman who is a delta the lab that i'd be working with are all black people so it's still a really really great option it's just not my number one option mainly because it doesn't have its own funding and because it's in lexington kentucky and it's like do i want to live in lexington kentucky for the next five years of my life i don't 
no. Like, I live in New York right now, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, mm, I don't know if that's where I want to move. That's why it's really at the bottom. But again, that speaks volumes to say that such a great option is my least favorite. So that lets you know that all the schools that I'm applying to are schools that I think that I would be genuinely happy with. <laughs> So I'm excited about that. I'm really proud of us because we've been paying for everything. GRE scores, and every time you submit GRE scores, they're $27. And we've applied to five schools, so you do the math. All of these um, applications are super, super expensive. And we've been applying to and doing everything on our own while also you know, taking care of the day-to-day -day life with bills and everything else. So I'm very, very proud of us for doing all that stuff. And we have four of the five submitted. We submit that, then we're done. I get paid tomorrow for my lab my um y7 job and then next week we get paid for our research job so depending on how much money we get tomorrow um will let us know if we're submitting now or if we're going to wait a little bit but i'm just ready to get everything turned in submitted and finalized so that i can have a little bit of a break before the interview process starts i really yeah I'm really ready to just like I said it's exhausting I've been doing this research for these schools and these professors now for well over a year writing my statement of purpose and rewriting my statement of purpose and rewriting my statement of purpose just to get the template and then once I had a strong template I was rewriting and rewriting and rewriting for every school that I applied to for the faculty so all of that it's and it can be very exhausting to be writing and rewriting and revising 25 million times for 25 different documents and all that kind of stuff um and so i'm i'm ready i'm ready to get this stuff submitted and turned in so that we can just be done and um on to the next process which is preparing for the interviews which to me is fun because then it's like i get to pick out my outfit my perfumes what i'm gonna do with my hair my makeup all that kind of stuff rehearsing my answers to these questions i'm just really excited that we are starting to get these applications turned in i'm very very proud of you i'm very very proud of me i'm very very, very proud of us um this process has been a lot like i literally have a little bit of a headache just because i'm kind of tired i haven't eaten anything today oh because i'm also sick on my cycle and caught a stomach bug all at the same time so we're starting to like recover a little bit now you can hear the sickness still in my throat and in my nose um but again we're pushing through oh and i sprained my ankle like a week ago week and a half ago or something so i still feel it in there like it's still not all the way healed so we're just going through it but um resilience right we're pushing through um like how we always do so i'm just very excited to finally be getting this stuff actually submitted and turned in because it, it's it can be a very exhausting and draining process but i really feel like we're starting to get the ball um rolling last thing because i am watching courage the collie dog and i'm about to go to bed but i just wanted to say you're a freaking trooper this is a trash bag full of tissues there's nothing in here except for tissues because you've been going through it the last couple of days and yet and still still managed to get your phd applications out so I'm very proud of you oh y'all <laughs> the little <laughs> my hair anyway my hair is coming out of the little twist that's why it looks like this you see this what's the matter just hay fever don't don't worry about that what i was gonna say is my job that i'm in right now actually i'm gonna just hold on that didn't help that didn't make it i'm gonna just put the you know how people be trying to block off their forehead i'm gonna just leave the camera right here because then you can't see the hair sticking out <laughs> but what i was gonna say is um my job that i work right now right i'm a clinical research coordinator so everything that i do i have to rely on somebody else to get their stuff together in order for me to be able to do what I need to do. First off, you, oh my God, can you let me do what I need to do? Yep. Now, mo oh my God, what the fuck, what? It's so frustrating if you're someone who's always on the go and has your stuff together. Because you'll realize that most people do not have their stuff together. Most people do not communicate well. And so it's a lot of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, bureaucratic nonsense to be able to accomplish the tiniest of things. So I was like frustrated these last couple of days. <sighs> Let me calm down. Somebody bring me some crap. Because it's been like that 
just constantly, just every day, me dreading get going to my computer. And having to do stuff, because I'm just like, I just know it's about to be more of this, and then it is. Um... And so at first I was just suffering, right? <laughs> first I was just suffering, like, what is going on? Why is this like like this? I am not enjoying this. Should I quit? Like, I'm not happy. I don't want to keep doing this kind of thing. But I knew that I would be starting school soon anyway. So I'm like, let me just work this job. Gave up some coin or whatever to go back to grad school. But then I tried to adjust my perspective. And I was asking the questions like, what is this trying to teach me? Like, what is relevant about this right now? And what I realized is that I'm in the middle of doing interviews. Like, I literally have an interview tomorrow for a PhD program. Um, and one of the things about PhD interviews is that they're not just interviewing you. You are also interviewing them because you're trying to decide, is this where I want to be for the next several years? Is this, like, am I going to be happy here? Blah, blah, blah. What I realized was this is literally teaching me what I need to be looking out for during my interviews. Do I like the principal investigator? Because that's the person I'm going to be working with. That's the research I'm going to be working on. What part of the research are like, what stage of the research are they in right now? Write that down, write that down. <laughs> Um, cause if they're at the very, very beginning of theirs, it's going to be a whole lot of back and forth stuff with the IRB and survey instrument creation and stuff like that. Is that what I'm interested in? Do I want to join somebody's study that is a little bit more established? Genius. That is less of that bureaucrat bureaucratic portion of back and forth, back and forth stuff with protocols and stuff. Um, is this a PI that I'm going to be excited to work with? Or do they talk to people crazy? I done got my ass beat so many times. Cause like I said, I'm an Aquarius, I talk back. Do they talk out the side of their neck? Do they seem like they're organized or do they seem like they're all over the place? Of course. So whenever I need to go to them for some kind of guidance about my stuff or whatever, they're all over the place. You know what I mean? What do your, what do their, students who are already working with them have to say about them she got to stop them was it are they helpful in helping them along with their own research or are you know like that kind of like it's so important it's so freaking important because this right here that i'm doing right now love the research that i'm in love my supervisor but everything else i'm also the only black person in my lab so the diversity thing, like not having anybody to be able to be like, with, <laughs> like, it's just me. It's just me. It's just me. So that's also something that should, that would, you know, weigh into your decision. It's nothing to play with. It's not a joke because with a job, I can quit a job. What the city girl saying? I don't work, y'all. I bitch, I am a job. You don't like it. Take a hike, penny for a second slot. I'm a rich ass bitch with an attitude. Pop it down for I will do like your mama do. I can quit. I'm a, I will quit a job, okay? With this, that's something that you would be committing to for the next several, several years. So you want to make sure that you are genuinely happy. Like, forget the name of the school. Forget that. I mean, like, it can be somewhere on your important list. But if you are between a school that's a lower rank and you would be happy there and a school that's like more elite or whatever, but you would be so miserable, go with the school that you're going to be happy at because five years is just a long time to be unhappy. And it's not just like a job where it's like, oh, nine to five. So once five o'clock is over, I'm leaving that stuff there and I don't have to think about picking it up again until tomorrow. No, with school, it's gonna be all day, every day. It is not over at five o'clock. Your classes might be over, might be. But then you still gonna have to do your homework, your trainings, your clinical trainings, all of that kind of stuff. You should be in love with your program because it's gonna be, it's gonna require a lot of you anyway. <laughs> so if you already don't like it and it's requiring a lot of you, you're going to be miserable. And I don't know about you, but I refuse to dedicate five years of my life to just being miserable. And you know, I know like, I can't have that mentality. Like, I'm not finna do it. So I'm trying to keep that in, in mind now that I'm preparing for my interviews. <laughs>